expert insights. So yeah. uh, buckle up because we're on a mission here to separate facts from fiction okay. and give you the knowledge to feel empowered, not paranoid, right? Absolutely. We want to arm you with information. Yeah. And it's interesting because this is one of those things I think we're constantly surrounded by the technology, right? but we don't always necessarily know what's going on behind the scenes yeah like how it works and what it might mean for our health exactly and that's what this whole deep dive is about right exactly so let's start with the basics yeah what are rf signals and are they actually something to be worried about yeah so you know you hear that word radiation right and it can be kind of scary yeah radiation it's always a little ominous isn't it it does have that connotation to it yeah. like something out of a sci-fi movie right exactly it's like are we going to sprout a second head or something right. exactly are we going to get superpowers right um but but the reality is, okay. it's a little bit more nuanced than that. Okay. So when we talk about the radio frequency waves or RF that our phones use, we're talking about a type of non-ionizing radiation. Okay. And that means, unlike things like x-rays, mm -hmm. they don't actually have enough energy to knock electrons off of atoms. Okay. And cause that kind of damage. So not the whole creating kind of radiation. Not quite, no. Okay. You're not going to get superpowers from your phone. Okay. So maybe not so much the sci-fi movie scenario. Right. Okay. okay. So a better way to think about it, I think, is to compare it to other types of non-ionizing radiation that we encounter every day, um, like visible light. Okay. Like Bluetooth signals, or even just the warmth that you feel from a fire. Oh, okay. It's still energy, but it's not strong enough to cause that cellular damage that we worry about. Okay, so that's reassuring, right? Okay. That makes me feel a little bit better already. Yeah. But our phones are constantly emitting these RF signals, right? You're exactly right. Even when they're just like, you know, yes. sitting there silently judging our scrolling habits. That's the thing about RF. It's not just when you're on a call. Right. Even in standby mode. Wow. Your phone is sending and receiving signals. Right. At lower levels, but still, there's activity. That's interesting. I never even thought about it like that. It's it's almost like it's always on, in a way. In a way, it is. Yeah, it's uh, constantly communicating. So should I be worried about, like, carrying it in my pocket all day? Well, that's a question a lot of people have. Right. And it's something to think about, for sure. Yeah, and I think a good way to think about it is, like, okay, it's like being out in the sun, right? Okay. A little sunshine is good for you. Right. But you probably wouldn't want to spend all day just baking under the midday sun without any protection. Right. Exactly. You'd get fried. Exactly. So in this scenario, what's our sunscreen when yeah. it comes to RF? I love that. That's a great analogy. Yeah. Um, and, and one of those layers of protection is actually built right into your phone. So all phones sold in the U.S. Mm -hmm. have to meet these specific safety guidelines that are set by the FCC. Okay. And these guidelines they take into account that constant low-level exposure. Right. And they're designed to make sure that RF emissions are within those safe limits. Okay, so our phones are already built with some safety in mind? That's right. That makes me feel a little bit better. Good. But I also know, like, even with sunscreen, yeah, I can still get a sunburn if I'm out there for, like, you know, right. five hours in the middle of the day. Exactly. Too much of anything right. can be a bad thing. So what about those times when... We're really using our phones a lot. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, everybody's doing those like Netflix binge watching marathons. Yeah. Those eight hour scrolls on TikTok. You're thinking along the right lines. And that's where it's helpful to understand what SAR is. Okay, SAR. Now that's one of those acronyms that I've definitely heard before. Right. But I'll be honest, I could use a little refresher. Absolutely. So SAR stands for specific absorption rate. Okay. And it basically measures how much of that RF energy your body absorbs from your phone. Okay. It's a way of quantifying how much is actually getting into your body. So a lower SAR rating would be better than, I'm assuming. Exactly. Think of it like this. A lower SAR rating is like a higher SPF sunscreen. Oh, okay. It means your body is soaking up less of that RF energy. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So how do I even find out what my phone's SAR rating is? So you can usually find it in your phone's technical specifications. Okay. Or you can look it up online using your phone's model number. And the good news is, because of those SEC guidelines, all phones sold in the U.S. already have SAR levels well below the safety limits. Okay, good to know. Good to know. Yeah. So we've got that going for us. We do. Which is nice. That's good. 
But, you know, sometimes even with all the best intentions mm -hmm. and all the right sunscreen, sometimes you just get a little careless and you stay out in the sun a little too long. You do. So are there other smart habits that we can kind of adopt in our daily lives? Sure. To minimize our exposure, just to be on the safe side? Yeah, absolutely. And I think it comes down to just being mindful, right? Yeah. So one simple tip is to keep a little distance okay. between your body and your phone especially when it's transmitting at those higher levels, like during a call. Okay, so no more like tucking it into my bra while I'm trying to, <laughs> like, you know. Exactly. Do the dishes and make dinner and talk on the phone. Yeah, maybe not the best idea. Okay, but seriously, though, how much distance are we even talking here? Because that seems like kind of a vague recommendation. So the general recommendation is at least 1.5 centimeters. Okay. Which is about the width of your thumb. Okay. It might seem small. Okay. But, you know, every little bit helps. That's actually doable. I like that. There you go. Okay, so what about those Bluetooth headsets, though? Yeah. Because those are supposed to be the safer option, right? Right. But they still use RF, don't they? They do. Bluetooth does use RF signals, right. but they... at significantly lower levels than your phone. Oh, okay. So it's still a smart move to use them, especially okay. if I'm like, listening to a podcast for an hour. Exactly, yeah, for longer periods of use. Okay, like if you're on a quick call, holding your phone is probably fine. Right. But for those longer stretches, using headphones or a headset okay. is a good way to minimize that close range exposure. Smart. Yeah. And speaking of headphones, our source material also touched on another important aspect of cell phone safety right. that I think we should talk about. And it's not directly related to RF. Okay. But it's something that I think we often overlook, hmm. and that's our hearing. Absolutely. I think it's easy to get caught up in the world of RF. Right. And kind of forget about this other really important part of cell phone safety, right. which is protecting our ears. Exactly. So let's dive into that a bit. So we're talking about protecting our ears mm -hmm. while we're out there enjoying all our favorite tunes and podcasts and everything. Exactly. Music to my ears. Yeah. Literally, right? Yeah. Yeah. But in all seriousness, what kind of damage are we talking about here? Well, you know, when you really crank up the volume on your headphones, right. especially for long periods of time, yeah. you're essentially bombarding your delicate inner ear structures with all these sound waves. Right. And over time, that can lead to something called noise-induced hearing loss. So, like, how loud is too loud? Right. Because I'll be honest, sometimes I catch myself, especially if I'm, like, on the train or something and I'm trying to listen to something. Yeah. I crank up the volume just to hear it over all the other noise. Right, and that's really common, and that's why it's important to be mindful of not just the volume, yes. but also how long you're exposed to it. Okay. So a good rule of thumb is to try to keep the volume at a level where you could still hear someone talking to you at arm's length, so you don't want it to be so loud that you can't hear anything else going on around you. Okay, all right. And if you are in those noisy environments, like on a train or right. at a coffee shop or something, yeah. that's when noise-canceling headphones can be really helpful. Oh, okay, yeah. They can reduce that need to crank up the volume just to hear over everything else. Okay, noise-canceling headphones, got it, check. There you go. So we've covered keeping our distance, understanding SAR, being mindful of our volume when we're using headphones. Right. Are there any other practical tips that we can kind of take away from all this? Just things that we can do in our everyday lives. Yeah, and you know, it might seem obvious, but one thing that we often forget to do is simply using our phone's speakerphone option or a headset whenever possible. Oh yeah. It might seem really basic, but it creates that little bit of extra distance right. between your phone and your head, especially during longer calls. Yeah, that's a good point because I'm guilty of just like immediately putting it to my ear. Right, exactly. And just like staying that way for like an hour. Yeah, and it's all about building those good habits. Okay, I like it. Yeah, just little things that we can do. Little tweaks. Exactly, to minimize those risks. Perfect. And remember, it's not about living in fear of our phones. Right. Right, they're incredible tools. Right. It's just about understanding how to use them in a way that minimizes those potential risks. Yeah, knowledge is power. Exactly. Okay. I feel like I've learned so much even just in this short amount of time. Good. It's not just about the RF, but it's also about, you know, thinking about our hearing thinking about just how we're using these devices in our everyday lives. And that's what's so great about this kind of deep dive, right? Yeah. It's about connecting the dots, looking at the bigger picture of cell phone safety, yeah. and then giving you the tools to make those informed choices for yourself. Absolutely. So 
as we kind of wrap things up here, sure. any final thoughts for our listeners out there? Just something to keep them thinking about this whole cell phone safety thing. Yeah, I think one thing that struck me as we were preparing for this is how much our understanding of this technology, mm. especially when it comes to potential health impacts, is constantly evolving. Right. So what we think is safe today might be different tomorrow. That's true. And that's okay, right? Yeah. The important thing is to stay curious. Okay. Stay informed and keep asking those questions. I love that. So that it's like this is just the beginning of yeah. a lifelong journey of learning and discovery. It is, absolutely. So to all our listeners out there, if this has sparked your curiosity, yeah. go out there, do your own research, Stay updated and remember there's always more to discover. Absolutely. Until next time, yeah. stay curious.